1 1.1 is all integers, opposites of numbers, and absolute value. Hopefully this is stuff you've seen before. We're going to review it quickly today. Um, there's some definitions here at the start. I don't know if this is stuff you've seen before or not seen before. This is something that may come up as we go through the semester. The first one there you see is a set, which is a collection of objects such, such as numbers. So you've probably seen sets written like this before. Five, seven, nine, ten, it might keep going. With like these squiggly brackets, anybody seen that notation before? It's a set. Those numbers inside of the set, we call elements. Those are the indi individual pieces that make up the set. So these are the elements of the set. What if a set has no elements? What if there's no numbers in the set? It's the empty set. That's the third definition there. So, and a lot of times if we have a set that is, has no numbers in it, there's a shorthand notation for that. It looks like a zero with a slash through it. That is the empty set. Okay, another type of number that we're going to look at a lot is rational numbers. Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction. So you see right there the A over B, that's that fraction form. You have a numerator and a denominator. Those are called rational numbers. And really, a lot of numbers can be written as a rational number. So 5 is a rational number. Is it a fraction? No, but can it be written as a fraction? Yeah. How can it be written as a fraction? Give me one example. Yeah. Five over one, yeah. Can anybody think of another way we can write that as a fraction? No? Yeah? Ten over two? Is that equal to five? So now that I did that one, let's probably come up with some other ones. Twenty over <coughs> four, etc. Okay. All right. Irrational numbers, that's the, the next definition. Those are numbers that cannot be expressed as fractions. Those are they have decimals that do not terminate or repeat. So one of the big examples of that, let's see, what number is that? Pi. That's approximately equal to 3.14, and then the digits keep going, right? That number can't be represented as a fraction. So you have rational numbers and irrational numbers. And you kind of see that in the chart down here, the number system is broken up into irrational numbers and rational numbers. And irrational numbers can be broken up further into integers, whole numbers, natural numbers. And it turns out that natural numbers are a subset of whole numbers, and whole numbers are a subset of so does anybody remember the difference between integers and whole numbers and natural numbers? Anybody remember those? It's not that important if you don't at this point, but integers are all the positive and negative numbers. So I'm going to start off with dot, 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 and then you have like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. So it's every positive and every negative number.
question? Okay, so what's the difference between whole numbers and natural numbers? There's it's just a very slight difference. Anybody remember? Whole numbers and natural numbers both don't include negatives, but one of them includes zero. The whole numbers include zero. Yeah. So the whole numbers would be zero and up. And what's that? The whole numbers would be everything from zero and up. So no negatives. And then natural numbers doesn't include zero. It starts at one. So it'd be one, two, three, et cetera, four, five. So if you kind of see the hierarchy here, natural numbers are a part of this set, right? What's the difference between this and this? It just doesn't have a zero, right? But then this, whole numbers, is a part of the integers. And then integers are a part of the natural numbers. And you can see that in the picture. The natural numbers are a part of the whole numbers. And then whole numbers are inside the integers. And integers are inside the rational numbers. And none of these numbers are irrational numbers. Let's move on. And I, you know, those definitions, not super important, but that's where the textbooks start off. I want you to have seen that before. I'm not going to have you memorize those things. We need to know how to work with these numbers. But I just so that you've seen these different definitions of the numbers. The number line. Raise your hand if you've seen the number line before. Yes, we've all seen that. So if I say, well, I think the the most important thing about the number line is what's right in the middle? Zero. To the right of zero are positive numbers, and to the left of zero are negative numbers. So, and then what I always like to say here then is that with the number line, the numbers always get bigger as you move to the right. So if I filled in this blank here, numbers on the left are always smaller or bigger than numbers on the right? Smaller. For example, if I looked at 7 and 4, which one of those is bigger? 7 is bigger, right? So the number on the left, 4, is always smaller than the number on the right, 7. You get bigger as you move to the right. Questions? Again, I, as I told you, this stuff is all review stuff. So what I'd like you to do now is take a moment and graph all those numbers on the number lines. Try to do the best you can. There's some there with fractions. See if you can go ahead and put those where you think they'd go on the number line. And we'll talk about it here in a sec. Just estimate where you think Okay, so the first one should be easy, right? Where's five go? Right there, yeah, that's easy. But now we move on to a harder one. Negative 2.5. Good. Well, the negative 2 and the negative 3, right? Is it halfway between, closer to the 2, closer to the 3? Halfway, because 0.5 we know is the same as a half, right? So it's halfway between it. Good. Okay. So there's negative 2.5 right there. How about 2 and a quarter? Who can raise their hand and tell me what two numbers that's between? Yes. Uh, 2 and 3, so closer to 3. Perfect, right? So, I mean, one of the ways you can think about it is if you sp make little hash marks to separate that into fourths. I don't know if you can 
see that there. Let me zoom in a little bit. If you split that up into fourths, two and a quarter would be the first little dash there, right? The next one would be two and a half, and then two and three quarters. Okay. So you guys have done this sort of stuff before, right? This is just review. Two and a quarter is going to be right there. Closer to the two, like we said. How about the next one? Negative three and three quarters. Between which two numbers? Somebody hasn't volunteered yet today. Yes. And closer to which one? Closer to the negative four. Good. So, if again, if we split it into fourths, negative three and three quarters is going to be pretty close to the negative four over there. Negative three and three quarters. Does anybody have any questions? Those are the hardest two right there, the ones with the fractions. How about negative four? That's pretty easy, right? I should have written down some different ones so these weren't so close together because my dots look like they're on top of each other. There's negative four. Did we get them all? Yep. Comparison symbols. We all know what these mean? First one. If that's equals, then this is not equals. This one is? You get these confused sometimes. Less than and greater than. This is greater than equal to and this is less than equal to. Let's write those last ones down. So this is less than. This is greater than. This is greater than or equal to. This is less than or equal to. So if you look at that first thing, the first one, the A is the less than B. Which number is smaller, the A or the B? A is smaller. The symbol always points to the smaller, and it eats, if you think of this as a mouth, it eats the bigger, which is my kid. So it eats the most of that. So, so, so that little note there, inequality symbols always point to the smaller of the two quantities. So if I take a look at 5 and 7, which one's smaller? 5. So it's pointing to the 5 and we would say 5 is less than 7. What about 2 and 2? Equal. Which is bigger, negative 3 or negative 5? Or which one's smaller? Heard blah blah blah. <laughs> negative three is bigger, which means negative five is smaller. So we're going to use a less than or a greater than here. Greater than. And if you're not sure about this, remember on the number line we just wrote that as you move from left to right, the numbers get bigger. So negative 5 and negative 3, which one's to the left there? Here's negative 5, here's negative 3. Negative 5 is on the left, which means it is smaller. What's here? Negative 2, is negative 10 less than 4 or greater than 4? Less than 4. And is 3 greater than or less than negative 6? Greater than. Questions about these? Absolute values. By strict definition, absolute value of a real number is its distance from zero on the number line. How far away it is from zero. And we denote it with the two vertical lines. So if you have your number line,
negative two here is how far away from zero? Two units. And positive two is also two units away from zero. Mm -hmm. So the absolute value of two and the absolute value of negative two are both two because they're both a distance of two away. However, most of the time we just remember absolute value as if the number is negative, you make it positive because distances are always distances are always positive. All right, so for example, absolute value of two we just talked about is two. The absolute value of negative two is what about this one? It is negative two. You got to kind of think about it like this. This, this negative sign is outside the absolute value, so if I cover it up, what's the absolute value of two? Two, but then the negative comes with it. What about this one? It's negative two. The absolute value of negative two is two, but then it's negative. This one a lot of times is confused with this problem. What's this one equal to? That's positive two. It's the double negative rule, right? There's, so there's a difference between having parentheses and having absolute value. Gotta make sure you remember that one. Any questions? Okay. Opposites. Numbers are opposites if they are an equal distance from zero, but on opposite sides of the number line. So what's the opposite of two? Negative two. And the opposite of negative three? You basically, opposites, you just change the sign. I know this isn't the most exciting math in the world, but this is terminology we need to know for the rest of the semester. So this is where it gets fun. I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes here to try it. Based on all these things we just talked about, try those four examples at the bottom of the page. And remember, if you have absolute value, simplify the absolute value first. So I would rewrite it before you try to do them. So I'll, I'll do one with you. The first one, I can rewrite this absolute value as 6, right? So is 6 greater than 3 or less than 3? Greater than 3. Okay, so try the last 3 there. Okay, so next example. Negative 9 and absolute value of negative 9. Right. Somebody think they know the answer to that one? Right over here. Uh, less, than. less than. Good. We agree with that? Because the absolute value of negative 9 is 9, and negative 9 is definitely smaller than positive 9. Good. Okay, somebody else for the next example. Yeah. Less than also, because what is the left side? It's negative 6. And the right side is 11. And that is less than. Somebody else for the last one? We agree with that? That's a tricky one, right? So <clears throat> this side is negative 6, and this side is? negative 25 and negative 25 is way out on the left on the number line right so that is smaller which means negative 6 is greater than negative 25 it is tricky and remember it always points to the smaller number and negative 25 is smaller than negative 6 questions about 1.1 okay can we move on to the second section short sections how do we 
add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers. And remember, we just talked in the last section that integers are basically all positive and negative <coughs> whole numbers. Okay? Typically, we think of whole numbers as not including the negatives, but if we add in the negatives, then we have integers. And so how do you do operations with those? And this is a big topic of pre-algebra. You want to get to the point where you can do them pretty quickly without having to use a calculator because it's going to make you a better math student if you can do these sort of operations without calculators. If you have to go punch buttons in every time you do a math problem, it's going to take you longer to do problems. So hopefully we can get to the point, if you're not already yet, where you don't need that. Numbers without signs are intrinsically what? So if I write this, is that number positive or negative? Positive. positive. If I don't put a sign in front of it, we assume it is positive. positive. So we say that they are intrinsically positive. Then we have the double negative rule, which we just talked about in the last section when we were talking about absolute value. Na the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. And that's what the double negative rule is really saying. A negative sign is another way of saying opposite. So if I read that, rather than remembering the, this rule, when you have two negatives, it's a positive. Another way that reading this is this says the opposite of negative 2. And we know that the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. Have you guys heard that before? So sometimes, I, you don't have to do this, but some of you may have been taught to do it this way. I could rewrite this problem as 4 plus a negative 2. Or I could rewrite this as 4 plus a positive 2. Whenever you subtract, you can think of that as adding the opposite. I personally <coughs> would not change this first example. Some of you may have learned it that way, though, and you just feel comfortable doing it that way. <coughs> 4 minus 2 is just 2, right? And then this one is 6. Now, I had a student show me this one time. I never learned it this way, but this may be helpful with the double negative rule. The student was taught that, well, you can just make this into a plus sign. Yeah. Anybody ever seen that? Yeah. That helps you. It is, but it helps for some people. Everybody learns math differently, so as long as you get the right, as long as you get six, I'm all right with it, right? Okay. All right. So, can we add all those examples there? This set two plus negative five, negative two plus five. Now, when some people, when I teach pre-algebra, this little song helps people. Don't make fun of my singing here. You should rap it. I'll, I'll sing it and then you rap it. <laughs> Same signs add and keep, different signs subtract. Keep the sign of your biggest AV, your answer will be exact. Same signs add and keep, different signs subtract. Keep the sign of your biggest AV, your answer will be exact. Terrible, right? Okay. <laughs> now, now, now you ready for the rap one? No. no. Oh. <coughs> Somebody get a beat going. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So same signs, add and keep the sign. If I look at this example right here, do these have the same signs? The 2 is what sign? Positive. The 2 is positive, the 5 is? Negative. Are those the same signs? Yes. 
So different signs subtract. So I'm going to subtract 5 minus 2, which we know is 3. And then you keep the sign of your biggest one. So which is bigger, 5 or 2? Well, what does AV mean? Absolute value. Which one has a bigger absolute value? 5. So you subtract 5 minus 2, and because the absolute value of 5 is bigger than the absolute value of 2, it's negative 3. Now me personally, I like to think about it like money. Positive 2 and negative 5, you earn $2, and then you spent $5. Did you spend more or earn more? You spent more, which means you now owe money, which means your answer is negative because you owe three dollars. Does that make sense? This isn't pre-algebra class. I'm just trying to review with you how to do these problems. Hopefully, you already feel comfortable with these types of problems. I'm given some ways that I work with pre-algebra students on this. If you're already at the point where you can go all the way through these and look at them and do them fast, that's where we want to be. But if you're not, we need to review. So do you guys feel comfortable doing these? Hopefully. So go ahead and try to do those and we'll in like the next minute and then we'll talk about them. I'll call on people. Which one? C. C. Oh yeah. Yeah, so this is one that's the, the other one, right? They have the same sign or different signs? Same signs. Same signs. So that's the first part of the song. Same signs, add and keep the sign. So because they're both negative, you add them together. Two plus five is negative seven. Or if you think about it like money, you spent two dollars, you spent five dollars, all together you spent seven dollars. And then the last two are a little tougher too because now you're working with more than one. We can talk about those, but do, do your best. Don't wait for me to do it. Do your best and then we'll talk about it. If you make mistakes, it's all right. That's why we practice. All right, anybody think they have D? Some, take some volunteers for people that haven't answered some of these yet. Yes? Three. What did you say? Three. Three, yeah, good. Right, so they are same signs or different signs? They're different, which means we subtract. Five minus two is three, but the five is positive. That's the bigger absolute value, so that's going to be positive three. What about D? Somebody different. Three. Yeah. We agree with that? Three? All right, somebody different. How about E? Negative three. Negative three. Are we all right with that? Yeah. yeah. Negative three? Because the neg you subtract, they're different signs. Seven is bigger, and that's negative has a bigger absolute value. What about F? Negative 11. Negative 11. How'd you get that? Do we add or subtract those? Add them. You add them, because they're both the same sign. Yeah? Anybody have any questions about these? How would we do G? Do we, if we did them two at a time, what would negative five plus two be? negative 3, and then if you add that to negative 7, we get what? Because once we do those first two, now both numbers are the same sign, which means we add them. And what about the last one? There are. What, anybody think they know the answer? Anybody get six? What did, what did you get? Negative four. Negative four. Anybody get four, negative four? Not everybody. I think negative four is the right answer. Somebody got negative four. How did you do it? Uh, yes. Right. Hand I added a negative five and a negative three, so negative seven plus a positive seven. Yeah. You can find a seat anywhere. Oh, yeah. 
So I like the way she did it because she's looking at the at the order and seeing the best way to cancel things out quickly. So she noticed that, and because you can add in any order, right? Everybody knows you can add in any order. If you add negative 2 and negative 5, that is negative 7, which cancels with the positive 7. So she added these two first, which are the same sign. That makes a negative 7. And then if you add that to the positive 7, that becomes 0. So what's the only thing left? That right there. But if you want to add it a couple terms at a time, you can do that as well. So, does that make sense? Anybody have any questions about that one? If you add them like one by one, though. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. If you add negative 2, you can add in any order. You can add in any order. So, if you add negative 2 and negative 5, you get negative 7. But we still have a plus 7, and we still have a negative 4. Right? Just bringing this down, bring that down, and negative 2 and negative 5 is negative 7. 7 and negative 7, though, is 0. And negative 4 plus 0 is negative 4. Do you have to add it in that order, though? though? No. So, another way you could have done it is you could have added the first two. Negative 4 and negative 2 is negative 6. And just keep writing everything. Negative 6 and positive 7. Same signs or different signs? Different, which means we subtract and the positive 7 is bigger, so that's a positive 1 plus a negative 5. And what's 1 plus a negative 5? Okay. Now, we have about 12 minutes left here. When we subtract, it's almost the same thing, I think, except for the double negative rules. So like this first one, A, I would just go ahead and subtract. Are those, two, are those the same signs or different signs? It's three, yeah. But this is a positive 7, right? If there's not a sign written there, we know it's positive. So you have to subtract. 7 minus 4 is 3. Whereas this next one, these are same signs, which, which means we add. So this is going to be a They're the same signs. Negative 7. Remember, you can rewrite this if you want. Some people like to rewrite this as negative 7 plus a negative 4. Do you have to rewrite it that way? Depends on how you learn. I try to get people out of rewriting like that because it takes longer. Does that make sense? Questions? C, though, is one where you definitely do need to rewrite, because what do we have here? The double negative rule. So this becomes a positive 4. So this could be rewritten as 7 plus 4. Because now they're both the same signs. They're both positive, so we add an keep the sign. So on the next one, if I rewrite it, this is negative 7, what? Plus 4. Is that going to be 11 like the last one? No. See the difference? They're slightly different, right? You need to get in the habit, though, of whenever you have that double negative, like here, 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 we change it to a So what's the what's E? Four. 
Okay, you ready to try some on your own? F through I. Go ahead and try those on your own. We're going to get a chance to do more practice over the next couple days. Um, these will be problems that we'll practice on the homework in class and outside of class the next two days as well. So here, this is 6 plus 2. That's a double negative. So this equals 8. What's the next one? Negative 8. Next one? Negative 4 because we need to change that to a positive 2. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. And then the last one, we could say 13 minus 6 is 7. And we need to add that to negative 21, which is negative 14. And we, we need to subtract 15 from that. These are both negatives, which means we add them and keep the sign, right? And then what happens on here? This is a add 9, which makes negative 20. We get that? I, I walked around and saw about 10 people's paper, and they all had negative 20. If you didn't get it, don't feel bad. We're going to do more practice, okay? Questions? Okay, so moving on. Multiplying and dividing. So if I multiply two numbers and they're both positive numbers, the result is positive or negative? Positive. positive. However, if I multiply a negative by a positive, it's a negative. And if I multiply two negatives, I get a positive. Unlike real life, where two negatives don't always make a positive, right? And then this, this only really deals with if we multiply two numbers, but what if we multiply more than two numbers? So that's kind of these rules over here on the side. That's right. So if you multiply an even number of negative factors, your result is positive. Whereas if you have a negative number of odd, uh, an odd number of negative factors, your result is negative. And that's basically just an extension of what we see over here. Because every two negatives make a positive, right? And we'll see that in example D here in just a second. Any questions so far about that? Okay, so if I take negative 4 times negative 9, we know this is multiplication, right? Because of the parentheses. How many negatives there? 2. So a negative times a negative is a positive 36. Do I need to write the plus in there? No. Just assume it's positive. What about B? Positive 14? C, positive or negative? negative? Negative 20. And then D, now we have how many negatives in D? Four negatives, right? Is that an even number or an odd number? Even, even which means the answer is going to be positive. Now, I don't necessarily like to remember all those rules. I think you can get that without remembering this side. You just say, okay, those two, that's two of them, so that's a positive. And these two, that's two of them, so that's a And a positive times positive is a positive. There's all kinds of different ways to think about it, though. So you can think of this as 5. Think of this as 8, right? And 5 times 8 is 40. Okay? What happens if I multiply something by zero? zero? It's always zero. Anything times zero is zero. And the last thing we have here is dividing integers. I'm going to move quickly through this. A positive divided by a positive. Positive. This one thing about dividing is it's very similar to multiplying. The rules are the same. So a positive divided by a positive is a positive. 
positive divided by a negative is a negative. Negative divided by a positive, still there's only one negative, so that is negative. But then we have two negatives. If I divide a negative by a negative, I get a positive. This stuff, we've all, we've all seen this before, right? Okay. Can we divide by zero? No, we can multiply by zero, but we cannot divide by zero. That is what we call undefined. So the last few examples here, 12 divided by 4, 3. Is the sign positive? As opposed to the next one, we have 1 negative, so this is going to be a negative 3. What about C? And D? It's all review, right? Easy stuff? It'll be more interesting as we move through the semester, but we got to start here because I know not everybody remembers all this stuff. So.